Welcome to mini lecture number two in 7503 NSE Aviation Economics. In the first lecture, we looked at some of the basic features of airlines, some of the basic economic terms, and how the airline planning model is something that integrates with the strategic planning model, and we'll be seeing this throughout the course. But we said one of the first things that we've got to really do is show as to how airlines take a look at their basic economics the markets that they want to be in and taking a look at demand and competition. So with this lecture we're actually going to be doing uh, some of the uh, further fundamentals of economics. First of all we're going to be describing markets and their features and explaining how the airlines fit within those markets. We'll be looking at supply and demand economics. This is one of the most fundamental economic principles that applies to any market that you study and it's important that we see as to how this works with airlines. And we'll be looking at the impacts of price, quantity, supply and demand, elasticity and elasticity, and lots of other factors. But this mini lecture, we can only just touch on those to give you a taste. We'll be looking at market forces, market competition, and we'll be describing the concepts of competition and competitive advantage. In the first lecture we said with an airline, it's really hard to distinguish yourself from another airline when you're competing for the same employees, you're competing with the same aircraft bought from the same markets and often flying exactly the same routes as other airlines. So how do you distinguish yourself? And we'll explain how the airline industry identifies competitive scope and service concepts as part of their strategic planning. And every time you fly with an airline, you're trying to get the best value for your money. And sometimes you say, well, if an airline's going to offer me a little bit more baggage allowance or a meal on board, but it's still the same price, I'm going to fly that airline. And that's what we're going to be studying. The first thing we look at is microeconomics and the price system. Now, don't be deterred by microeconomics. It's a term that's pretty standard, and it studies the economic behaviour of individual decision-making units, such as consumers. That is, you are a microeconomic unit. And we want to find out as to how these act in a free market situation and affect the people who are providing services. And we'll focus on the circular flow of economic activity. And this is something that you see all the time when you read about the news and you study what's going on as to how your salary is going to be affected in the future, how government taxes affect you, and as to how, basically, how much money you've got at the end of the day to spend on yourself. We're going to also look at macroeconomic theory, which studies the total or aggregate level of output. That is. We're looking at the big picture. The microeconomics is just looking at individual units. The macroeconomic side is looking at the big picture. And of course, what we study is circulation. And if we look at a simple model, we simply say that we've got three major areas. We've got the household, you're part of a household. We've got the government, and we all know who our parent governments are. And we've got the corporation. And that can be any company that we wish to think of. Of course, in this of course, we're generally talking about uh, organisations in aviation that go to earn money. With governments, of course, they play a very important role in airlines because they decide who flies into and who flies out of a country. That's very important when we study aviation economics. So, what do we have then? We've got the different markets. We've got the workforce market. For example, when you graduate, or you could be in a workforce market already, We've got the financial market. This is the stock exchanges, the areas where people put their money to invest it so it grows for the future. Then we've got the commodity market. And the commodity market for us is anyone who's producing products or services. Then, of course, we look at foreign investors or foreign investment. And we say, obviously, corporations go to the workforce market to get their labour. People go to the workforce market to provide their labour. And then, of course, the workforce market provides a wage back to the households, and the households can then uh, pay taxes to the government, and the corporations, as they earn money, pay taxes also to the government. Then, of course, we get the households go out and spend part of their disposable income on commodities. It could be buying a seat on an airline. Also, they might decide that they're going to invest part of their disposable income in that financial market, and they might buy shares in airlines, and we'll be seeing as to how important that is throughout the course. Then, of course, with the commodity market, 
corporations make a yield by making commodities, they also invest part of their profits into the financial market, and also governments will uh, also invest in the financial market via bonds, and also foreign investors put into that financial market. So we'll be taking a look at this circular way of spending and also uh, incomes throughout the economic system. So it's a very, very simple model, but throughout the course, we'll be seeing as to how airlines and the people who work for them interact with that market itself. So if we take a look at the final part, we see this business of imports and exports, and of course this becomes very, very important for airlines when they actually seek to be able to uh, purchase foreign aircraft because foreign currencies come in, and also uh, and at the export side as well. The other side we'll see again is when currency changes is part of the macroeconomic system. This affects households because obviously when your dollar is worth a lot more overseas, then you might be prepared to travel overseas. When your dollar drops, people stop travelling overseas. So we'll be looking at all these forces and the way in which they interact and of course the whole business of taxation. Supply and demand economics is an important feature also. It is one of the most fundamental things and this is something that you come up against every day. For example, if there's a glut of foodstuffs on the market as food ripens at a certain time, suddenly you find that certain things like cherries or strawberries that are normally expensive suddenly become cheap. And of course it's the same with airlines. If they put lots of seats on the market and there are more seats than people prepare to travel, suddenly prices go down. So we'll be studying this concept of supply and demand. And of course we'll be looking at some of the most basic features of that demand. And of course we know that as soon as our price starts to drop down, more and more people want to buy that particular quantity. And so we can see that we get a basic demand curve. What we also find is that this demand is affected by a, a, quite a few factors. The preferences of passengers, the numbers that are available, their financial status, the price that competitors are offering, passengers' expectations of how prices will go in the future. We'll study all of these and the way they affect. We'll look at the importance of elasticity. That is, if you drop your price by a certain amount, will you expect to get a disproportionate increase in the number of people seeking seats? And we'll look at the concepts of elastic demand, inelastic demand, so that airlines can find out, has it really been worth changing our price? We'll look at the supply side as well, and we can see that as soon as we start to take a look at the price going down, then of course airlines might say, well, it's, it's no longer viable to provide as many seats, and so they might actually restrict the supply that they're putting in. And we'll take a look at those features and we'll see how supply and demand curves interact together and they tell us as to where we get an equilibrium price and quantity and we can work out exactly when we have an excess of supply and when we have an excess of demand. We'll be studying all those features. It looks a little bit complicated now, but we build this up slowly. And it's a fundamental fact of studying economics to see how these things really do interact and work in the real world. The other thing is we'll be talking about sources of competitive advantage, and these come from a whole stack of different areas. What's our market share as an airline? What's our strategic positioning? That is, when people hear our name, what do they associate our airline with? For example, when you hear Singapore Airlines, you tend to think of Singapore Girl and the advertising that goes with a very, very comfortable way of travel. When we hear Emirates, we tend to think of very, very good service. We look at national environmental factors and how they impact on our competitive advantage. We'll look at innovation. We'll see that airlines are being constantly innovating to try to get ahead of their competitors. And we'll look at how airlines use their resources. If we take a look at competition, we come up against concepts such as the competitive scope decision. Where do we want to take people? What's going to be our service price offer? Is it going to be a bare bones offering to the people? Or will we offer them that little touch of luxury that makes travel something important? 
And we see this with certain airlines that are now offering virtually a separate cabin as part of first class travel, whereas we see some airlines that offer just the bare bones travel. That is a seat and nothing else um, to go along with it. We'll be talking about profitability. What do we expect our profit to be and how do we stay within that? And airlines will be seeing right throughout when we study the news are constantly battling to make sure they meet their profit expectations. What's their cost base like? And of course, again, airlines are always looking to get their costs down. And we'll look at features such as outsourcing. And how do satisfied customers become loyal customers? And do you remember that saying from the first lecture I was talking about, where we said the concept of the loyal customer is becoming perhaps a thing of the past, but airlines still want to make sure that once they've got a customer, they hang on to them, especially the business customer. And that's going to be particularly important. So in summary, at the end of this uh, particular lecture, once we've gone through it on the course, you'll know about markets and their features and how the airline industry works within those markets. You'll know a lot about supply and demand economics and you'll find the concepts are really quite easy. But once you understand them, you'll get a very, very good understanding as to why airlines do the things of the way they do, such as going for excess capacity when in fact you might be cutting your own throat. We'll be describing market forces and market organisations and competition and competitive advantage and all the tricks that airlines are constantly looking to to make sure that they get the edge on their competitors. It's virtually like a form of warfare. And we'll be explaining how the airline industry identifies competitive scope and service concepts as part of their strategic planning. They want you, when you hear their name, to think, this is a good deal for me and I want to take a seat on board one of their flights. That will be one of the features that we will be getting to understand more and more throughout the course and this is part of the building block of understanding how those airlines operate. Thank you.